Well, hello, God bless you. I'm back in the saddle. This is Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I'm back in the saddle, saints. We just got back. We were in Warring, Ohio with the Torch Youth Conference. Torch Youth Conference with Pastor Paul Rangold. Thank you, Pastor, for the invite. God bless Evangelist Gilbert White, who is ministering there, and oh, the Jones sisters. And uh, to speak at the Torch Youth Conference was a joy indeed. And we're so excited about uh, uh, b having been there on, on last evening and being back here in place to minister the word of the Lord to you, God's people, at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And here we are. Uh, we're well into, we're in the middle of Jesus Pride Month. June the 15th, Jesus Pride Month. And as you know, this is our obvious pushback against those who have dubbed it Pride Month. Pride. Notice they don't say homosexual pride. They don't say lesbian pride. They don't say trans uh, pride. They don't say even gay pride. You know, I don't call them gay, uh, but, uh, but just pride month and, 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 and they've done such a good job with marketing and, uh, with having the cooperation of government, having the cooperation of the media, having the cooperation of woke corporations, having the cooperation of sports into, uh, uh, teams and, uh, 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 uh different people uh, that uh, everybody understands what Pride Month is all about. It is the celebration of that which God calls an abomination. Did you ever believe that we would actually see a day, of course, yours truly did warn you that the day was coming, that we would actually celebrate that which God calls sin and make into law that which God calls an abomination. And I'm amazed at the number of preachers and churches and leaders um, uh, uh, who say very little or give such a heinous display of rebellion a slap on the wrist. Let me tell you, Israel rebelled against God under the reign of that wicked King Manasseh during the reign of King Jeroboam the first, King Jeroboam the second. They rebelled against God. They treated uh, a disobedience to God as a light thing. Uh, the prophet Ezekiel talked about how Samaria uh, uh, and, and, uh, and Jerusalem was much more wicked even than Sodom. And they treated the sin of Sodom like it it was a light thing and they flaunted their sin and how God reigned destruction and judgment. I believe my friends that we're witnessing judgment and destruction in the, in society and in the world as never before. I'm not as concerned about global warming. I'm not as concerned about these things as I am global sinning. I believe that sin is having a profound impact. Yes. Even on our weather. I believe that the earth this morning because of the wickedness and the rebellion of man that's taking place on the earth. And have you forgotten? We serve the God who has the power to darken the sun. He has the power to cause it the rain. He has the power to send drought. He has the power to, uh, to send locusts and to shut up heaven that there be no rain. Have we lost our fear of God in America and around the world? And more importantly, in the church? Has the media done a good job convincing you that God is not involved? Have you, my friends, who named the name of Christ, have you unwittingly and some of you wittingly become deists? Do you believe that the Lord has actually made the earth, made everything, and then set it out on its own to operate on its own without any divine intervention? Do you believe that God is not looking, that God doesn't see? Do 
Have you lost faith in the Lord's ability to answer prayer? Have you lost faith on the effect that righteousness will have on a society? Do you still believe that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people? My friends, I believe these things, and I believe what we're seeing in society today. We're seeing, we're reaping the fruits of rebellion. I believe that uh, I do, well, let me rephrase this. I do not believe that we're threatened in society today by inanimate objects. I believe that the problem that we have is the hearts and the behavior of men. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times would come because men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, lovers of their own self, lovers of money, men, not guns, not knives, not bombs, but men. Then when you take these guns, knives and bombs and, and bombs and you put them in the hands of wicked men, wicked things happen. So if you take one inanimate object out of a man's hand and you outlaw that inanimate object and uh, but if the man is still wicked, he'll find a way to still cause carnage and death and strife. And I don't believe that the, anything can change the hearts of men, uh, but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I want to say this to you. And then I want to invite you to join me tonight right here at the upper room. As you can see, I'm fired up. I'm excited about the Lord. I'm excited about what he's doing. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter number 16 and verse 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit and uh, uh, arrogant spirit before the fall. I would that you would talk to any medical professional and just talk to them about the medical problems, about what they see, about what they see what's taking place in society, just in the field of medicine, in the field of sickness and disease that has aroused from men walking in fornication. Jesus said, uh, if any man did, uh, put away his wife for any cause other than fornication and marries another, he commits adultery. Fornication, that word fornication is pornea. Pornea is any unlawful, illicit sexual behavior. It includes extramarital sex. Uh, it includes premarital sex. It also includes... Uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, bestiality, and all of these things. Think of, just see, oh, if you just knew, if the doctors would just tell the truth, what men are doing to destroy them, their own bodies. You know, Gary King James got it right when he said, abusers of themselves with mankind. Many men are destroying their bodies, driven by lust and desire, and they end up maiming and destroying themselves where their bodies doesn't function anymore uh, as it is designed because of their sexual appetites. We're seeing parents we're seeing parents, we're seeing moms and dads, moms and dads, families bringing their children to wicked surgeons to actually, actually cut off their healthy sexual genitals private parts and to uh, change the life of children and, and doing this uh, uh, to, to, to children who are uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, kids who don't know what they're doing, who don't realize the wickedness of their decisions. And yet families are bringing these people to doctors for doctors to do these things. And, and I want to tell you this before I go, the setup is in the setup is in. If your child is suffering gender dysphoria and you take your child to the doctor, if the doctor then recommends that your child see a psychiatrist, I want you to know, that that psychiatrist was not randomly picked. That psychiatrist is in on the game. They already know what to tell your child when your child goes in there to get counseling from him. They are they 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 got the talking points ready. They are uh, fired up. They know what to say to 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 get to encourage your child to go deeper into confusion. Moms and dads, wake up. Wake up.
The answer is the God of the Bible. The answer is the truth that you'll find in this book. And I tell you, it is true indeed. Now, I've gone on too long, and uh, I just thank you for watching and listening. And I want you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for <laughs> Bible study. I get a kick out of that every time I do it. I think Bible study is a big deal. <laughs> We're going to walk into scriptures. We're going to have a marvelous time and God is going to bless us real good. I see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And for those of you who are too far, you live uh, uh, in areas where you can't come. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for praying for us. Keep us lifted in prayer. God bless you.